What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone Light. Don't look at him. He will hurt me. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. So last few episodes, we've been working on applied energistics. I think this episode, we're going to continue on with that and try and get our storage up to snuff. We currently are using these, is that seven a 1K storage disks? Yeah, it's not a whole lot of storage. Uh, a lot of our resources, we are collecting in storage drawers over... Well, right there, we got some up here, right? Our mob farm stuff that's uh, from down below is being collected over into these drawers. So a lot of our bulk storage things that we're getting a lot of right now are just going into drawers. Everything else, all of our miscellaneous things, yeah, they're all going onto these discs. But as you can see, we have a few of them that are yellow, which means they can't hold any new types of items. We only have two green ones, and these even have a lot of stuff on them, and they're nearly full. Yeah, we gotta do something about that. Uh, so we had set up these auto processors, I guess the auto inscribers to make processors a while ago. I did expand this out, and I added in two more of these over here. So we have a total of three that are able to do silicons, and then we have three of them over here that complete the entire processor. Yeah, so anyway, we have each processor has its own unique inscriber, so we can make all three processors at the same time, which will help speed up things tremendously. So yeah, that's all done. We have all of our CPUs over here, which we can expand out and make bigger later should we need to, but I feel like that's probably going to be enough. Uh, this back wall doesn't have anything. So I think we're going to move our storage drives down here. We're going to expand out the amount of drives that we're going to have. And then another thing that we are going to need to do is add extra storage, power storage for our applied energistic system. Yeah, this whole thing does require power. And I think we saw that the controller itself, without anything else, just to power the controller, was like 900 RF per tick. All these different cables we have cost, all the P2Ps we have on there cost extra, even the drives that we're going to have. Uh, I don't remember, did we make a network tool before? We did. All right, so if I take this and I click this, right click it onto our screen here, this tells us how much power is stored and how much power we are currently using. So right now we're using 1,007 or 1 1.7 thousand, yeah, I guess 1,700 RF per tick is what we're using right now. Uh, so that's with the system doing nothing. When we start importing, exporting, and storing things and doing crafting and stuff, that makes the amount of power that we're using more right so we definitely want to increase the amount of power storage that we have so when we start doing things like that we don't run out of power uh so one of the things we can do we can make these dense energy cells here so it is eight of the regular energy cells wrapped around a calculation processor makes a dense one i don't remember how much power that stores but it is a decent amount so let's make let's make three of those I think that's a reasonable uh, way or a reasonable amount of those to make. Uh, Fluex dust is a thing that we are currently running out of quite often. Uh, if we tell the system to make like 200 of the Fluex, it does that quite fast, but we don't have a way to turn the Fluex into Fluex dust. Getting this stuff <laughs> automated, all the machines and processing things is definitely one of those other things I'm looking at doing very very soon uh we need to figure out where we're going to be putting these machines yeah these were just set up here temporarily because this is where our power was and i've just left them here uh but yeah we definitely want to find a better spot for all of this stuff uh this does process the fluex into the dust pretty quickly right we don't have to wait very long in fact i think this is one of the faster recipes the only thing i've seen that's faster than this is processing sand into the silicon but yeah, we need all of these things hooked up to be automated at some point. So I don't have to keep coming over here and spending my time to do this. <laughs> all right, so there you go. There's the two stacks of the Fluex dust. Don't look at the Enderman. Don't look at them. All right, so we need the dents. I think I said I wanted to make three of those. We got everything else. Looks like we have everything ready to go. So this should be a relatively fast craft. It does have to make three of the calculation processors which it looks like it's in the process of doing after it gets this, the pure certus quartz, and we're done. All right, so there's that. Uh, we're gonna want some ME drives. So we currently have one. I think we're gonna make a total of six of them for right now, and then we'll expand out later. 
So yeah, the drives require the engineering processors, the diamond ones. But again, like all this stuff goes quite quickly. And see like all these different things down here doing their work. The only way to really speed this up would be if we have these things automatically making what it is that they make all the time and storing into like a chest or something. So we always have those on hand. I don't know if we want to do that though. <laughs> I, I think just making them on demand is good enough. So here's our five ME drives. And I think over here, right where this Enderman's standing is where we're going to put our dense energy cells. So let's do that. We'll put these guys right here. And we'll put our drives on either side. So we'll do something like that. And then the other one that we have upstairs will go right here. Then we can continue expanding this out as we need more and more stuff. So another thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make 64K discs. Now I've already pre-made up some 64K, but I only made 10. And we're going to want to make probably enough to fill up all of those. So a total of 60. So for right now, let's just go ahead and put those into the storage housings. So that'll be a pretty quick craft here. Okay. So there's that. There is all of these guys. All right. Quest updated ME storage cell to 64K. Uh, so we could do this in a few different ways. We can just put the discs in here, hook it all up and just call it a day. And then the applied energistic system will put some here and I'll put some stuff here and maybe over here. Or what we can do is kind of set the priority on these things. So we can set this one. I kind of feel like these want to be a lesser priority. Like if we can store things in the storage drawers, we want to do that. So maybe like our first one here, we'll set as like a negative one. And then the next one we'll set as a negative two and then a negative three, et cetera, et cetera. So the way that's going to work, this one will be the higher priority than this one. So we'll fill up these discs first. And then when this one fills up, it'll start filling up this one. And then this one, we can kind of visualize where our storage is just by looking at the lights on it. I think that's probably a better way of doing it. But anyway, uh, here's the first set of discs, all 10 of our 64 K discs are right there. Uh, we need to get this linked up to our system, which should be pretty easy since we already have the P2P connections downstairs. So let's grab another P2P tunnel. I'll just craft one up real quick. And then we want some of the lime cabling. I'll make like 20 of those. Perfect. There's this thing. We're going to want our memory card, which I have right here. And then we got to figure out where we're going to connect that to downstairs. So I think these two right here are the ones that we have for our auto crafting. Don't remember where this one's going. Maybe over on that side, this one appears to be free. So I will shift right click that guy to copy it. And we'll have to put our, Oh, you know what? I want to get a ME dense storage. One of these guys. Okay. So we will come back down here. <laughs> And let's see, we want our green cable, which we'll be wrapping around over here. I'm sure something like that. We'll put our P2P on there. Oops, that is not the P2P, is it? We'll put our P2P on there and then we'll put the dense cable. Like so. I don't think these use any channels, but this cable does connect to it, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be just fine. Just like that. Okay, so we can get, oh, I also need the regular Fluex to keep with our theme here. Grab just two of those. I think it makes eight at a time, but we just need two. Oh, no, it makes four at a time. All right, I'm back downstairs once again, this side. Do that. Do that. That'll get connected when we get our other drive down here. And that's pretty much all we need to do. Pretty much it. We just need to run this cable over. And, oh, yeah, that's going to connect. We need <laughs> one more thing, one cable anchor. We'll put the cable anchor right there to keep these guys from touching each other. We want to make sure those connections are separated. Again, you can use other colored cables instead of Fluex, and then they won't connect. But we're just using Fluex, so we got to separate them like that. Okay, so that's pretty much all we got to do. We need to right click this to load the settings and then these should come online. These should start filling up with power and then our new 
remote storage is all set up. So yeah, you can see those are filling up with power and changing color and stuff. So that's working pretty well. These just came online. So now the next step is we need to take the storage that's on these and move them downstairs. So in order to do that, we need to make an MEIO port. I think is what it's called. Yeah, this thing. So this will allow us to copy items from a disk onto our network, or you can also copy stuff from your network onto a disk. If you want to take all your cobblestone out of your network or something, that's something you can do. We do need two ME drives for this. So just go and craft those up. I don't think that takes too long, right? Uh, we do need the disk. Oh, we need a logic. Let's make a logic processor while we're waiting on those other things to be made. And there we go. So there's an MEIO port storage, sh storage cell shuffle. All right. So that just needs to be attached to the network somewhere. And we will take these disks out. We'll mess with the configuration here. So we have by default, it says disk to drive, or we can do drive to disk like I was talking about, but this is the setting that we want. So we want to take all the stuff that's on these disks, just put them in here. It'll start taking all the data off of them. You can see these all say zero and zero out of the bytes and the types now. So we can shift click those into our inventory. So everything that was on these disks is now on these disks down here, right? So yeah, <laughs> that's going to be very, very good. It seems like we're using a lot more bytes than what we're using on these, even though these are storing the same amount of stuff, right? I think the way this works is a when you put one item on an ME storage cell, a 1K1, it uses a percentage of the bytes for that unique type. And then every new item of that same type uses less bytes. So the bigger the disk, the more that percentage is. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, to work the, out the, uh, the math on that. But yeah, that's using 33,000, even though one of these only hold 1,000. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of odd. Anyway, uh, that is the same amount of stuff that was on the disk that are in my inventory. So we can take these guys apart now, reuse those ME storage housings for our new disks, and reuse these uh, the one K storage components for turning into the sixty four Ks that we're about to make. All right. So now that all of those are done, we can put those away and tell the system to make. Well, I don't know. How about twenty more? 64 Ks. All right, so we're gonna need a little bit of glass, some more silicon, and everything else seems pretty happy here. I think I was cooking up some more glass. I think over here, we'll have to double check. Oh yeah, we got plenty of glass over here. And then we need some silicon, which all I need to do is turn on our existing sag mill that was supposed to turn sand into dust, but it turns sand into silicon. So this thing, like I said, goes quite quick. In fact, it goes so fast. We set this in out. This goes so fast that it starts starving all of these things. Like the conduit is trying to put the sand into here and it doesn't have time. Like it'll start <laughs> forgetting about these other ones and these will start starving out. You can see the cobblestones are already losing right now. Yeah, this goes really fast making this stuff. Now, another thing I didn't notice about that silicon uh, we had them going into a storage drawer over here, right? Yeah. Apparently the silicon has the same ore dictionary as this silic, or I guess, what is this? A sky stone dust. Like if you hover over, it, it says item silicon. We take one of those and we hover over it. It says item silicon as well. So originally I was making that silicon. It was going into the system and I was losing. I was like, where's all my silicon going? Yeah, it was turning into this sky stone dust stuff. I didn't realize, I don't know why they both had that same item silicon name on there, but that's the thing. So you gotta make sure you got two separate drawers, one for the silicon and one for the sky stone dust. Otherwise you can convert between the two unintentionally. Like if I take a stack of this out, is it shift? Yeah, there we go. I can right click it onto here and convert it that way. Anyway, it's just something to be aware of. So I think we should be good to go here. I'm gonna go ahead and cook up was it the 2064Ks? Let's see about this real quick. 20. 
Looks like we're good to go on that craft. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get all these things going and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, so I got a little ambitious and added a few more drives and a few more of those dense energy cells. What can I say? Also, we had them right up against the wall and all of our other components here are like three blocks away from the wall. Like, well, I guess these are two blocks. I should probably fix that at some point. It'll bother me. Uh, like our auto crafting things are properly spaced. These are right up against the wall and that was bothering me. So I moved them forward. Yeah, so we got a little bit of space here. We added in some more of these dense energy cells, some more drives, and we have all of these filled up, all 60 of those 64 Ks, which is awesome. So we need double that to fill these all up. I really don't think we're going to need that much space, but you never know. Anyway, so we get, we're going to have plenty of space available. And you can see right here, we're using 12 of our 32 available channels on that dense energy, or I guess that dense ME cable. Okay. Yep. I think this is going to work out pretty well. Now, one thing that I've noticed since we've added in all those energy cells down there, it's drawn a lot of power out of our system. And I was looking at how much power we have and I could see that we're this little bar down here indicates that we are like half full or two thirds full or whatever. But I was looking at our input versus our output. Guys, we're only gaining like 60 RF per tick. Like we have very little wiggle room at this point for what we can do before we're draining power. Even with all of these dynamos, I even added in an additional five of these things between last episode and now. These are all at the reinforced level, all with the augments in here that we can do at this point in time. It's still not very much enough of what we need. <laughs> uh, I did not check to see if our refined fuel is going up or down. I think that might be going down. I think we we're at 12,000 when I hooked up those last five. And now we're at 11,000, which has me a little concerned. We're going to have to up our fractioning stills to the next level. These guys are also on the reinforced level. So if we go to the kit... From thermal expansion, we look at the Signalum upgrade kit. These do require cryothium. So that's going to be a little bit tricky for us to do. I'm sure we can pull it off. It also requires Signalum ingots, which is easy for us to craft in the alloy smelter with some copper, silver, and redstone. But yeah, the cryothium requires snowballs, niter, redstone, and blizz powder. Blizz powder comes from blizz. Right, you kill them, you get the blizz rods. I don't think we have any blizz around here. You need a snowy biome, like snow or taiga. I don't believe they spawn extreme hills at all. So we have extreme hills here, but I don't think we have a snowy biome to get these things. Uh, yeah, when we get those, we have pulverize those into four blizz and then get a 50% chance at a snowball. The other option is to take a snowball and infuse it with the fluid transposer with two pieces of redstone that have been destabilized. So we need a magma crucible, a fluid transposer, and then snowballs to do this process. I think this might be the way that we're going to end up doing it. Yeah. So we're going to need a few more machines here in order for us to upgrade our power. <laughs> oh my goodness. One thing after another. So what do we have over here as far as our thermal expansion machines? We have an induction smelter, a compactor, a pulverizer, and a redstone furnace. Yeah. So we need to get ourselves a fluid transposer. And then we need to get ourselves a magma crucible. Fluid transposer, magma crucible. So those require nether bricks, invar, redstone gear, or I'm sorry, redstone reception coil, redstone conductance coil, machine frame, nothing too crazy. Fluid transposer. Uh, looks like around the same kind of stuff. It requires a bucket, but whatever, that's not a big deal. Let me go ahead and craft those two machines up. I'll craft the two upgrade kits so we can make those the reinforced version. And then I think we're going to need four of the augments. Uh, these, the auxiliary reception coils to speed them up a little bit. Yeah, not so bad. Let me go and craft those things up and then we'll be right back. All right, guys. So I went ahead and made the magma crucible and we got ourselves a fluid transposer. I made hardened upgrade kits and reinforced upgrade kits. So we'll upgrade those and we'll upgrade those. Also, I made the augments two of the auxiliary reception coils per machine. Yep. We should be good to go now. So I want to change the settings here. Shift right click the center here. We want to set this to output to the fluid transposer. Shift right click this one and we'll set this one to receive from the magma crucible. Okay. I think we should be good to go. As long as these things fill up with power, 
Uh, so the other thing is we're going to need snowballs, right? We have redstone. I've been processing a lot of dust and sifting that dust. And we, now we have 47,000 redstone. We had like 50,000, but I guess all of the 64K drives I just made required a lot of that redstone. Anyway, so yeah, we got a decent amount of this, but we're also going to need the snowballs. Currently, we have 16 whole snowballs. And this is from when it's been raining up here in our extreme hills biome like at our starting place we had a little bit of snow on the ground here right so i've collected some of that uh what we need to do is get ourselves two snow blocks and then we're gonna need a pumpkin <laughs> so we can make ourselves a snowman and do like a snowman farm a snowball farm uh we don't actually have a pumpkin right now but we do have pumpkin seeds so oh, we need to get ourselves a hoe and then our watering can, our trusty watering can. I believe this one works pretty well for the vanilla crops. It doesn't really work too well for the magical crops from what I've seen. Uh, we'll just plant it, I guess right here should be fine. We want to be able to have four spots available for that pumpkin to grow for like our maximum efficiency on it. Yeah, all we gotta do is just water can this thing. I guess it's probably better if we were to bone meal it. No, oh, actually, can we torque bone meal this? doesn't appear so okay so we need to bone meal it so it's mature and then water can it which i do believe will increase the speed let's grab a little bit of bone meal it's probably way too much i only need probably three or four pieces but whatever just grab the stack it's faster all right get bone meal and then we'll just go and water can the stock uh or maybe the the land around it and there we go there's our pumpkins all we needed just one of those guys Okay, so now we're going to want to make our snowman. We got to be careful where we build the snowman because we don't want it to melt, right? Uh, we want to make sure that it can't be rained on. We want to make sure that it's in the correct biome. Let's grab something to retain it. I think we'll just put it right up here at our start, right? Seems like a pretty safe spot. Like maybe right there should be good. This is still extreme hills up here. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, so we'll put... Oops. Well, I guess that's fine. We'll do that, that, that. Then I'll also put a slab here so he can't jump out. All right, so we'll do this, this, and then right above it, it can't be rained on because of our giant mushroom. And there we go, snow golem, perfect. Uh, we do need a way to harvest the snow though. <laughs> right now, I have I don't think I've even made a mad talk. Let's just do a diamond shovel be the easiest way for us to do this the best way would be to get ourselves an unbreaking shovel or an unbreaking maddock i do believe you can harvest snow with but for right now we just need a decent amount of snow to get us by and i'm perfectly fine with wasting one diamond to do this all right so we just need to make sure we don't aim at the snowman i think if you get a certain distance away you can get it faster maybe or maybe that's fixed well Careful, snowman. Don't get killed by the shovel. <laughs> so anyway, snowballs appear to stack to 64 in this mod pack, which is great. By default in vanilla Minecraft, they stack to 16 like eggs. It doesn't make sense why they would do that. But anyway, we should be able to collect all the snow that we're going to need. Yeah, that should be enough for now. Let's get two stacks of redstone. Right. Then we'll take it over here and we will infuse it with the infuse the snowballs with the redstone. So we'll take that, we'll melt that down. Two of those makes one blizz. Perfect. Okay, so again we're going for the cryothium. Which requires snowballs we got, redstone we got, blizz we got, niter I'm not so sure about. Now niter we can get if we had blitz rods, which you know we might have. I think we're getting both blitz and basals in our mob farm. Yeah, we have these things. So that's one way to get the niter. Another way is you can pulverize sandstone to get sand back, and then you'll get a 50% chance of niter. And I think it's better if you do sandstone stairs, if I remember right. Yeah, sandstone stairs give you a 75% chance at the niter. And these blitz rods, which we already have, gives us a 50% chance. This might be the best way. If we look at the uses for that. Yeah, we can only use those in the pulverizer. We can't do that in the sag mill. Now the sag mill might also give us a better chance at niter. No, it's a 15% chance. 
No, it's definitely better using the pulverizer with sandstone or the blizz rods or blitz rods. Since we have these, we'll just go ahead and do it this way. I think that makes the most sense. Okay, so let me get these resources together. We'll start making some cryothium and then we'll be back, guys. So a lot of crafting later, we have all this blizz powder that we don't need. But what we do need is this niter, right? So we have the niter, we have our blizz powder. I've been making up some electrum with some gold and some silver. Made some hardened glass and made 20 electrum gears. Whew. All right, so we're going to need these signalum upgrade kits. And we need 20 of them. Uh, but yeah, we're going to need 40 of the cryothium dust at a minimum. There's 64. I think we're good. So if we do this... And we do this. I also made up a bunch of signalum too. I did a full recipe of that in the alloy smelter. So three stacks of copper, one stack of silver, and ten stacks of redstone. So that should give us four stacks of signalum ingots when that's all done. It's still cooking up over there, I do believe. So there's our upgrade kits, right? So the signalum ingots are done. The upgrade kits are done. Cryothium's done. Let's go get rid of all of that. So when we upgrade our machines, we're going to make the ignition plugs augment for them. These are the specialization for our compression dynamos, which only allow refined fuel, which is the only thing we're using anyway. And it says it greatly increases power generation and efficiency. So I really believe this is what we need to do to up our power after we upgrade them to the signalum level. So yeah, that requires pyrothium and fused quartz. Uh, I made some hardened glass, but I did not make enough. I think I have eight, and that's only going to allow us to make eight upgrades. We need 20 of those upgrades. How are we doing over here? All right, so there's the rest of it. So, yeah, we should be able to make a load of those specializations. Put that away. All right, so we want signalum gears. We're going to need 20 of these. I don't know if we have enough in the system. We do. Okay, so there's 20 of those. We're going to need copper plates. Uh oh, so that means we're going to need 40 pieces of copper here. And those need to be turned into plates. We'll use our plate making machine that we have, our compressor thing, this one. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a lot of augments, so we're going to be kind of limited on that one. So we'll just let that go while we're doing some other things here. Uh, so with those plates, we also need pyrothium dust, which is blaze powder, redstone, sulfur, and coal. I'm not sure where we got sulfur from, but we have 40 in the system, which is enough for what we want to do here. So we should have practically everything. I do need to make these conductance coils. We need 20 of those. Okay. So once those plates are done, and once we get some pyrothium made here... The full stack. <laughs> we should be able to go. All right, so I guess we should see how many of those copper plates are made, and then we can kind of check out how the power difference is going to be. So we'll be able to make five of them. But right now, I'll have to wait for the rest of those to finish up. So let's do that. So there's five of the specializations. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and upgrade all of these to the signalum level, which should increase the amount of power that they're generating. So right now we are currently making 3,320, 3,320. So when we put these upgrade kits on here, I guess before we do it, we can see right here. So this is making 160. When I click that on there, it is now making 200. So that's a pretty significant increase for all of these machines. I'll go ahead and click all of these upgrades on there. It's nice that they changed color so you could tell which ones have been upgraded and which ones have not been. Okay. And those final four, cool. So now we are making 4,120. So we're currently gaining 800 RF per tick, which is great. It's way better than what we were doing before. That gives us a brand new augment slot in here. Let's put this in here and see what that does. So we're currently doing 200 RF per tick. I put that in here. We're doing 420 RF per tick. Wow. Okay, so that specialization is gonna really, really boost the amount of power that we're producing here. So with just five of those in there, we're now generating, is that number still going up? 5,220 RF per tick. So that's giving us uh, almost a 2,000 RF per tick buffer. And then we can also add those augments into these 15 other dynamos, which we haven't done yet. So that also increases the fuel usage. 
So hopefully we'll start gaining on our fuel usage again. I'll have to keep an eye on there over time and see if we're gaining or losing still. I don't know if adding in the Signalum upgrade makes it use more fuel or just generate more power. I don't really know how that all works. It looks like the rest of those are done here. Let me go and make the rest of these kits. We'll put them in there and check out the total amount of power that we're now generating. Cool. So with all the upgrades and the specializations installed, we're now generating 8,520 RF per tick. It's even including this little Sterling generator down here, our original power supply, which I think we're going to go ahead and get rid of. We really don't need that anymore. It is generating 120 RF per tick just off this lava that we're not using. But honestly, the fact that it's making more sound and more lights and stuff, yeah, I think we can just go ahead and get rid of that. But yeah, 8,520, that gives us the 5,270 RF per tick buffer. Way better than, what was it, the 60 RF per tick that we had previously? Yeah, and there's still one more final upgrade that we can do for these and that bring them up to the resonant version. I don't know how much RF per tick that'll change, Maybe we'll get up to like around the 700, maybe 600 RF per tick range. That'll be pretty good. That'll give us a lot of power off these guys. Eventually, we'll probably look at upgrading to a different power supply. Maybe we'll go to big reactors or extreme reactors, whatever they're called, or something else in the future. But for right now, these little compression dynamos have definitely been getting the job done. Very happy about that. But anyway, guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.